It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. To search it out is the glory of kings. This is the Message to Kings podcast. Podcast special, The Joy of the Lord. Joy is the serious business of heaven, C.S. Lewis. Welcome back to the Message to Kings podcast. This is your host, Brad Houston. Last week, we discussed the peace of God. This week, we pick up where we left off. This week, we're doing an English word study of sorts on the spiritual concept of joy. Discussing last week's episode with Janelle, she asked if I covered the shalom of God, which is basically the Hebrew word for peace. Well, I didn't. Honestly, I limited the word study to our English understanding of the word peace from the scriptures. Have to admit, we could possibly keep going another hour or so if we go Greek and Hebrew, and it'd be a lot deeper. But I guess it's best now we call these... Um, English word studies of these words. A bit limited, but peace and joy are such a huge part of our walk with God. So to the deep Bible student, not going to pull any concordances on these studies, but we'll still, like always, try to paint a good picture for everyone. All right, that being said, and the possibility still exists, we may go deeper on another day on these words. But here we go. All right, let's start now our look at the joy of the Lord. Here we go. Let's go back to our shepherds in the fields outside of Bethlehem. Here's the whole account. Good tidings and great joy. Luke 2, 8. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I will bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there with the angel and multitude of the heavenly host praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will towards men. So it was, when the angels had gone away with them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they had made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at such things, and they were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart, Then the shepherds returning, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen as it was told them. So the angel that stood before the shepherds, the descendants of Boaz, who watched over the priestly Levitical flock, were startled when the angel of the Lord stood before them. The standard statement of visiting angels was, Do not be afraid which is normal when the physical is completely invaded by the spiritual. But the next statement was, Behold, I bring you great tidings of great joy. Great joy. Jesus coming as a babe is great joy. The great joy was Jesus has come, the time and the place set aside by God for the visitation and the redemption of man, the fulfillment of all time, the reason for history, the fulfillment of the law, the redemption of man starts with the birth of Jesus in this scene. It's a time of great joy. This is the reason for prophecy, the reason for everything. Great tiding to mankind. 1 Peter 1.10 Concerning this salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come searched intently and with the greatest care, trying to find out the time and the circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them was pointing when he predicted the sufferings of the Messiah and the glories that would follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves but you, 
when they spoke of the things that, that had now been told you by those who had been preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit spent from heaven, even angels long to look into these things. Most super deep Bible students end up spending time studying and trying, trying that is, to figure out the book of Revelation, which in my words is God's one million piece puzzle. This is our version of this scripture. While the prophets search the word for potential times of fulfillment of the Messiah, the next time a revelatory scripture fulfillment on a grand scale would be the book of Revelation. This scripture mentions the prophets and even angels long to look to study the time of the fulfillment of the time of Jesus. So back to those simple shepherds. This shows the significance of this event and how prophets and students for ages and ages and eons studying and pondering when the fulfillment of the redemption of man would be. I bring you great news. The joy of the world has come. The time when the prophets searched the scriptures, the time of fulfillment of prophecy, the time of the fulfillment of the ages, the time of all times, the great joy has come. A great joy has come. So what is joy? Joy has many definitions. The Webster 1828 Dictionary has some cool definitions for the word joy. The passion or emotion excited by the acquisition or expectation of good. That excitement of pleasurable feelings which is caused by success, good fortune, the gratification of desire or some good possession, or by a rational prospect of possessing what we love or desire, gladness, exultation, exhilaration of spirits. Joy is a delight of the mind from the consideration of the present or assured approaching possession of a good. Of all these abundant, wonderful definition phrases, I really like exhilaration of spirits and a delight of the mind and the approaching possession of good. This exhilaration and approaching possession of good fits right into this scripture. Proverbs 10, 28. The hope of the righteous brings joy, but the expectation of the wicked will perish. So hope brings about joy. That's cool. We know from Galatians 5, joy is the fruit of the Spirit. I've even heard it stated by Christians that you know a true Christian by their joy. The stranglehold of sin keeps a person in shame and prevents them from not experiencing but living in joy. Joy can be a temporary thing, but can also be a permanent living joy in one's heart. Check out this verse, Nehemiah 8.10. Then he said to them, Go on your way, eat the fat, and drink sweet wine, and send portions to anyone who has nothing ready. For this day is holy to the Lord, and do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Joy is an inner strength against sin, dark surroundings. And it is and welcomes more the Holy Spirit to engage on our behalf and to do marvelous things through us. Ecclesiastes 9, 7. Go, eat your bread with joy. Drink your wine with a merry heart, for God has already approved what you do. And I sure did eat lots of bread with a merry heart for Christmas. Do you experience joy around this time of year? A welcome time of family and blessing? Psalms 47, 1. Clap your hands, all people. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. Joy in worship is considered praise. Dancing before the Lord is jubilant, isn't an act of worship. Isaiah 12, 6. Shout and sing for joy, O inhabitant of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Luke 15, 7. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Philippians 1, 3. I thank my God for in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you, all making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. There's also joy in suffering. Recently, independently, I read about Stephen the martyr. And that's on another level. But when it comes to his story... We're looking at a man who stared at the face of God. Not even sure if he felt pain at the point of death as he stared at Jesus on his throne, standing before his Father as he forgave them. 
Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you all with joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. There is great spiritual power in joy. Have you ever laughed at your issues or problems? Caleb said the giants will become our bread, which is the fuel of testimony. 1 Thessalonians 2.17 But since you were torn away from you, brothers, for a short time in person, not in heart, we endeavored more eagerly and with great desire to see you face to face because we wanted to come to you. I, Paul, again and again, but Satan hindered us. For what is our hope or joy or crown of boasting before our Lord Jesus at his coming? Is it not you? For you are our glory and joy. 1 Peter 1, eight. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. 2 John 1.12 Though I have much to write to you, I would rather not use paper and ink. Instead, I hope to come to you and talk face to face so that our joy may be complete. Researching this program, I came across some good quotes. Gotta read this one, for it's so good. The men whom I have seen succeeded best in life have always been cheerful and hopeful men who went about their business with a smile on their faces and took the changes and the chances of this mortal life like men facing rough and smooth alike as it came. Charles Kingsley Also, we started the podcast with C.S. Lewis, who called joy the serious business of heaven which is really an entire sermon of its own. Well, above all, we must consider what's going on here. It's Christmas, and Jesus came to earth as a babe to live the mortal life to redeem us. It is good tidings and great joy. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Hebrews 12, 2. On behalf of Message to Kings, We wish everyone a Merry Christmas. May you and your home be filled with the peace and joy of God as we celebrate the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ.